Hello, everyone. This is part two of my perusing the seven inch collection. I've had these, uh, I've been collecting these seven inch vinyl records, you know, basically all my life. I probably got a dozen of these boxes full of them. And uh, lately I've decided that since I haven't really looked through them in years, uh, I decided to look through them with you guys. So here's box number two. Uh, box number one was ABC alphabet starting into the D's a little bit. So this is DEF through GHI. Let's go. What's in here? Oh, there's a good one. That's a good one, you guys. Dead Kennedys. One of my favorite bands of all time. Too Drunk. Oh, and look at this. Now, I think this is a reissue. I don't think this is the original Too Drunk. I mean, uh, Nazi Punk's 7-inch. Uh, but the cool thing about this... And if you find an original one of these, I think it goes for pretty good money. But this is the repress. I forget when the repress came out, but it does include... Oh, it's sealed. I was going to get that armband out to show you, the Nazi Punk's armband. Uh, but yeah, it's sealed. I want to say this came out in the 90s, but I can't remember. So anyway, there's the... Nazi Punk's 7-inch Dead Kennedys. Whoops, forgot to put that cardboard back in there. Um, so yeah, 7-inch records. They're, you know, the thing about 7-inch records is that they're really hard to display for other people to see. You know, they're really, the only way you can really display them or, or store them is like in boxes like this. If you put them on a shelf, you can't see this. You know, there's no spine to see. It's really hard to flip through them. So, hey, look at this, Dead Milkman. It's the thing that only eats hippies. Hey, this looks like an Australian pressing. Yeah, it is. It is. I think I may have purchased that in Australia. I believe I did. Dead Milkman, my, my, one of my bands, uh, my punk rock band, Rabid Salesman from the 80s, early 90s, we opened for the Dead Milkman once. It was great. Oh, now this is really rare. Do you guys know what this is? Death Piggy. Death Piggy were uh, members of Guar, as I understand it. 1980. Does that say 1985? I think it's 85. Hard to find seven inch there, kids. Death Piggy. <sighs> Look at that. Why do I have this? Deck the halls. Gosh. Why do I even have it? I'm going to pull that out and see if I can sell it. <laughs> I don't want that. Lenny D. I don't know why I have Lenny D. Don't want it. Pull that out of there. Martin Denny. Oh, I love some Martin Denny. Uh, Exotica music from the 60s, I believe. Yeah, Martin Denny's good stuff. Oh, here's another one of my... Fave bands, Descendants, Bootleg. That's a good one. Oh, here's another. These are uh, later ones, later singles. Um, UK Press, oh, I guess this might be, uh, oh yeah, Outtakes. This is another Bootleg. Descendants, great punk stuff. There's another Descendants. <coughs> Pardon me, this is a, an, an official release, I, I reckon. Dialogue. I don't remember what this is. Seems like some new wave stuff. Hmm. Or Power Pop. Looks like it might be Power Pop. 1984, Tampa, Florida. Don't know. Oh, here's some friends of mine. The Dick Panthers. Amazing stuff. Born to Litter. Yeah, they're great. Uh, the guy in the Dick Panthers... Uh, the main the main guy behind this was a member of um, Crapper Keeper, another band I had. Digits, there are some intense uh, rock and roll right there. I love the digits. Here's some more digits. I agree. Oh, look at that! Digits do a Dickies cover, and they kind of do the Dickies logo there. Huh. 
I might want to pull this out and listen to it. I don't remember what their Dickies cover sounds like. Oh, one of my favorite punk bands of all time, Dirty Rotten Imbeciles. I believe this is a bootleg reissue of their Dirty Rotten EP. Uh, blue vinyl. That's great. Oh, here's the original pressing of Violent Pacification. I believe I bought this 7-inch from the band at a show they did in 1980-something. Four. But I can't... Is this a repress or what? This looks like a repress. But I don't know. It could be original. Uh-oh, I lost my spot. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, DRI, definitely one of my favorite punk bands of all time. Love that band. I just can't... I can't remember if that's original pressing or not. If it's not the original pressing, I think I have the original pressing framed on my wall. Disco Tex and the Sexolettes, one of my favorite disco bands. You guys should check them out if you like disco at all. Early disco, too. I mean, early disco. This is like 1974. So that was back before the, you know, the, the mainstream disco craze. Uh, disco Tex again, promo only. I want to dance with you. This is a great song. Love me some disco. Love me some disco. DOA, okay, yep, Canadian punk, classic stuff here. Great stuff. I'm surprised I don't have more DOA singles. Dogface Hermans. They were from, I want to say, gosh, Belgium or Amsterdam. Or, I can't remember where these guys were from, but they were great. They had a girl singer. I saw them perform in Chapel Hill, North Carolina in the oh, 80s or 90s. I'm trying to figure out where these guys are from. Amsterdam, that's right. They're from Amsterdam. Dogface Hermans. Great stuff. Uh, horns, guitars. Like I said, a female singer. And it's intense stuff. It's really, you know, high energy for the most part. Really interesting instrumentation. Uh, I remember the guy in this band, I think it was the bass player or guitar player that had a uh, soup can lid, cut off the soup can, and then inserted it into his string so that when he hit it with a, uh, a drumstick, it would make this great sound. I, I can't even duplicate the sound with my mouth, but Dogface Hermans, they're awesome. And this is not very easy to find. Okay, dog face, where are you going here? Here we go. Now, Thomas Dolby. Of course, classic synth pop, new wave stuff. Europa and the Pirate Twins. I don't see this single very often. Uh, great stuff, Thomas Dolby. Oh, yeah, this single, too. This is the original cover, I believe, of his first album. And this is the single, Europa and the Pirate Twins, one of my favorite Dolby songs. Love that. Yeah, more Thomas Dolby, Blinded Me With Science. The Cyclops Glasses cover. Great stuff. More Thomas Dolby. Blinded Me With Science. Is this a promo? Don't think so. I think it's just a UK pressing or something. Oh, this is a weird band. The Double O Zeros. I think they were kind of glam punk from L.A., I mean, look at the stuff they have on them. I don't understand what is uh, sewn to them. Looks like candy or some kind of erasers or something. Yeah, the double O zeros. Look at that artwork. Be a zero. I can't remember what it sounds like. It seems like it was kind of like joke rock, like like comedic uh, glam. This came out in 85. From New Jersey, Mountain Records from New Jersey. I thought they were from California. Maybe they are from California. God knows. I got to look that up. Double O zeros. I'm sure I bought it for the cover. Divine. Divine. Saint Divine here. Born to be cheap. Love Divine. Have another Divine single here. Shake it up. Not the cars shake it up, but Divine's shake it up. Love Divine. Distraction Boys. I don't remember what that is. I'm thinking this was a gift from somebody. I'm thinking that was a gift from somebody. I, 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 I assume it's punk rock. Don't know. Dr. Bitch. I love Dr. Bitch. My friend Matt, who was also in Sockeye, 
is in this band, and this is a, uh, a split with Schnauzer. Don't under, don't remember what they sound like, but Dr. Bitch is great. Ohio rock and roll. Drunk John Lennon. This is weird. I remember it being very weird. I'm going to hold your gland. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what this is. It sounds like, but I know it's great. Uh, J.D. Drews. Don't want nobody. I don't remember what this is. J.D. Drews. I don't remember. Huh. It's on Unicorn Records, though. That was the same label that put out Black Flag's first album. God, I wonder what that is. Duran Duran. I love Duran Duran. I have a huge Duran Duran collection. Great stuff. You know, I, kind of, you know, I liked them in, in junior high school, high school, kind of, sort of, but I liked them even more later on. I, when, I, when I went to college, I started listening to them and uh, really, really... Uh, I guess it, I guess you know I wasn't worried about whether it was cool to like Duran Duran or not, but um, they're they're awesome. Never did see them in concert in the '80s. I had to wait until like the early 2000s to see them. I think. Look at this, sealed Electric Light Orchestra, Sweet Talking Woman vinyl. I believe this is colored vinyl. Yeah, purple. Look at that purple vinyl. I love yellow. Here's Turn to Stone, another sealed 7-inch black vinyl. Great yellow stuff. Elevado. Elevado. I think I met these guys in Atlanta or Texas right around 2005, 2006, I think, maybe 2007. I think it's uh, some indie rock stuff. I can't remember exactly what it sounds like. I have two of those. I have two Elevados. Oh, look at that one. Electric Boogeyman, Breakdancing, Electronic Revolution. Yeah, that's got to be good. Looks like an import, too. Looks like an import. Where is this from? Where is this from? Holland. Great stuff. Great stuff. Oh, here's some great synth pop. The electrics. They're kind of like synth pop, uh, power pop, actually. Power pop rock. They have a couple of albums out that I know of, but they're really great. Oh, and this is totally a different vibe here. Alec Empire, some fairly brutal uh, digital hardcore on the Digital Hardcore Records label. I was a big fan of a lot of bands on this label. I saw... Alec Empire and Atari Teenage Riot and Shizuo and uh, lots, of, lots of bands on that label. I saw them live back in the day. They were excellent, very loud, which I'm into. EPMD, classic hip-hop. Love that whole album. And, uh, you know, lots of stuff from their albums to come, promo only. It's really hard to find uh, hip-hop seven inches with picture sleeves in such good condition. Strictly Business, excellent hip-hop stuff. 1980, if my eyes don't deceive me, that's 88 or 86. Good stuff here. The Evolution Control Committee, really great experimental uh, weirdo stuff. The X, uh, I remember them being like kind of post-punk... Uh, Post-punk alternative stuff. Um, I can't remember exactly what that sounds like, but I think there's a few in that series. Yeah, there's a couple uh, records in that X series. Easy E. Love that stuff. This is a promo 7-inch of his radio single. Love that. Ah, Father's Day. Father's Day. This is... Um, Great stuff from Arizona by Ryan Avery. Ryan Avery is uh, known for many things. Uh, he's in a lot of bands. There was a movie made about him. You might want to Google Ryan Avery. There's his name there. Layout by Ryan Avery. Great stuff. This is great punk stuff. And I think all the songs are from, like, uh, father's perspective, like, um, or about fathers. And it's all 
you know, bad fathers, basically, <laughs> drunk fathers, uh, you know, that kind of father. But great stuff, Father's Day. And here is, what's this? Oh, yeah, Tammy Faye Baker. I am a big Tammy Faye PTL collector. Love that stuff. Fear and their hit. Fudge Christmas. F-U-C-K Christmas. Beep Christmas is the censored version. This is a pretty hard one to find with the rubber stamp on the cover. Might have to keep that out for uh, Christmas this year. Let's uh, put that over there. Another fear. This is a fairly recent one. Put out by... Uh, uh, I think it was put out by Adam Age or something. Yep. Yeah. Love Fear. Great. I talked to Lee Ving on the phone once. He's a Devo fan. And he's crazy. And he's great. And Feeders. Oh, I love the Feeders. Love the Feeders. This song is, uh, this record is Jesus and Stop Your Killing Me on this side. Oh, Jesus is a great song. Jesus Entering from the Rear is, I think, the, uh, the uh, chorus to that one. Finger. There's some indie rock from, uh, from Raleigh. I don't remember what this sounds like, but they're uh, popular around these parts. Fisher Spooner, great synth pop stuff. Love a lot of Fisher Spinner stuff. I don't have as much Fisher Spinner vinyl as I would want, but um, I saw them a few times back in the day, early 2000s. They were fantastic. The Fishermen, don't remember. I think it's a local band. Yeah, Raleigh. I'm going to say it's indie rock. Don't remember. Oh, Flipper. Anybody know Flipper? Probably the drunkest punk band in history. Flipper's great. Their singles are not easy to find. Trying to figure out what songs are on this. Let's see. Let's see here. Get away. The old lady that swallowed the fly. <laughs> one side's 45, one side's 33. That's pretty cool. You don't see that very often. Come on, get in there. Okay. Ooh, more flipper. Oh, this is a good one. Love Canal and ha ha ha. And I say ha 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 ha. Oh, 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 oh. Great cover, huh? Flipper, amazing, classic, beautiful. I don't know what this is, but I bought it for the cover. I remember. Uh, you know, it's some uh, sweet Mexican music. Look at her. Styling. Man. So that's cool. I wish I could remember what that sounded like. Flying Saucers Unlimited. Sound effects. Oh, it's probably some kind of science fiction story for kids. Hey, look at that. Uh, hold on a second. Let me get this out of here. I don't want to store that in the record like that. Okay. That's a cool little uh, 45 adapter. Put that over there. Don't let the cats eat it. Remind myself, don't let the cats eat it. John Fox. Great synth pop stuff. Oh, this is great synth pop stuff. Love it. John Fox. Right on with that. What's this? I think this is more local music. As in North Carolina. Fragrant Cloud. That's right. Punk rock from uh, North Carolina. Crisis Records. Hmm. Hey, many thanks to Mike Pilmer for making our t-shirts. <laughs> That's great. I forgot about that. We were, and they recorded this at my house, Pine House. It was engineered by my friends Dave and Ian. You've seen Ian on, the, on my live streams before. But yeah, Pine House was where I used to live, and we recorded a few bands there. Great stuff. I wonder how hard to find this is. Probably pretty hard to find. Yeah, I remember liking Fragrant Cloud a lot. Oh, and check this out. Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. Good stuff. Frankie Goes to Hollywood, big fan. Big fan. Oh, man, this is 
in not great shape, but really hard to find. This is a faded Xerox cover or mimeograph, maybe, but it's the uh, the Fuck Ups um, six song mini LP. This is featuring Gigi Allen. Yeah, this is this is brutal stuff. Love it. It's pretty hard to find, but I wish the cover wasn't faded like that. But at least I have it. Uh, here we go, Deer Hunter. And the Carbonas and the Coat Hangers. Oh, and the Salamoneras too. But Deer Hunter and the Coat Hangers. I remember them. I saw them at a live show in Atlanta. I believe it was, um, yeah, at a place called Whirly, Whirly Ball. What date was this? Was June 1st. I want to say this was like 2005 or something. But Deer Hunter's great, kind of like psychedelic indie rock code hangers were all girl punk rock they were great both those bands are fantastic fun boy three this is uh what part of the specials became great um i don't know if it's synth pop or definitely some cool indie pop stuff i have a lot of fun boy three they are really cool uh let's see here oh future islands future islands is another band that was localish. They played a lot of little shows around here. Now they, they blew up. They've been on David Letterman. They're pretty popular now. I think they all live in Boston, maybe. Can't remember. Future Islands. They're good, though. Is this another? Oh, yeah, another Future Islands release. I can't remember the title of this one. 2009. They're cool. All right, so now, oh, we have a little section here of Funkadelic. Lots of Funkadelic. Let me see uh, if we got any picture sleeves in here. Undisco Kid. If you got funk, you got style. Uh, the Witch. Oh, man. The Witch. Funkadelic had a song called The Witch. Oh, Bootsy Collins. Met him recently. Uh, well, recently, last couple few years. Really nice guy. I gave him a uh, sealed... Bootsy Collins 8-track tape, which he really enjoyed. One Nation Under a Groove Funkadelic. Yeah, lots of Funkadelic 7-inches. California Dreamin'. Eddie Hazel. Oh, yeah, Eddie Hazel of Parliament Funkadelic. That's a hard one to find. Bootsy's Rubber Band. Let's see. A more Bootsy's Rubber Band. Pinocchio Theory and Rubber Ducky. It's this is uh, Brides of Funkenstein. That was an offshoot of Parliament Funkadelic. There's Parliament Star Child and Super Groovalistic Prosifunkstication. Ha <laughs> ha! They had a way with words. Parliament P Funk wants to get funked up. And Night of the Thumposaurus Peoples. They could they could use the words. George Clinton. Yep. Loopzilla and Pot Sharing Tots. <laughs> There's a picture sleeve. George Clinton RB skeletons in the closet. Promo. Promo. That's nice. Met George Clinton once in my life very briefly. He was, he was, it was, a, that was like meeting a saint. Uh, last dance, George Clinton. Oh, another picture sleeve, George Clinton. Atomic dog promo. Nice. Oh, here's a weird little section here. A band called Happy Flowers. Now, this is a compilation that Happy Flowers was on. Happy Flowers was a band from uh, Virginia or West Virginia, Virginia, I think Virginia, I think Richmond, Virginia. And their whole thing was um, starting with their first album. Uh, I think this was it, the first record. They did songs from a child's perspective. And so their first album was, you know, really, really young, you know, almost like just post baby children about this age group here. And all their songs are from child's perspectives, like, uh, Let's see the song titles here. Mom, I gave the cat some acid. And 
Meadowlands and requests. I don't know. Okay. But yeah, mom, I gave the cat some acid. Uh, and then as their records went on, the age group of their songs got, got more and more. So for instance, uh, you know, the next record, they were maybe a toddler. Uh, the next record after that, slightly older. And their very last record they ever did was from a teenager perspective. And after that, they really couldn't do anything because then it gets into being adults. Uh, so Happy Flowers songs for children. There's that weird comp. Before they were Happy Flowers, they were called the Landlords. Uh, or at least, uh, I think at least one of them was in the Landlords. I think maybe both of them were in the Landlords. There was only two guys in Happy Flowers. Here's Happy Flowers BB gun. Great stuff. I cleaned my cutout with a wire brush. I saw them perform in concert down here at a place called the Fallout Shelter in the, I want to say, late 80s. And that was sweet. Weird Paul opened for them. Happy Flowers, Call Me Pudge. This is their uh, teenage years. And Happy Flowers, My Head's on Fire. That's a uh, Weird Paul cover. Mom and Dad Like the Baby More Than Me. <laughs> what are these other titles here? Ruckwurtz Essenjits. I don't know what that is. I dropped my ice cream cone and the, these peas are so green. Happy flowers. Good stuff. Good stuff. And I have a bunch of albums by them too. All right, last little section here. GHI. Gang of Four. Excellent. Excellent classic stuff from England. Leif Garrett Fan Club record. We sampled this, uh, my band Silica Gel sampled this record on our 50 Noisy Children Party album, which is still available on a double vinyl, reissue, whatever. Contact me if you want one. Um, Leif Garrett, and here's a local band from Greensboro, North Carolina called Geezer Lake. They were great, kind of post-punk indie rock uh, stuff. They were great. Geezer Lake. More Geezer Lake from Greensboro. And more Geezer Lake from Greensboro. And guess what? More Geezer Lake. My band Rabbit Sales, we used to play shows with them, and they were really fun. Oh, yeah, original Generation X single. This is a early punk band from England starring Billy Idol and uh, Tony James and uh, Durwood, you know, like classic... Uh, Punkers from back in the London town. Oh, this is the gear gay gee gee. This is really uh, intense, brutal, hard music here. I believe from Japan. The gear, yeah, Japanese ultra shit bands. <laughs> They're great. If you like anything brutal and noisy, you would like the gear gay gee gee. And this is, I think, the German Shepherds. Oh, yeah, this is pretty harsh stuff, too. The German Shepherds. 1984. Look it up if you like brutal noise. They're great and scary. And this is Debbie Gibson out of the blue. Uh, I believe Japanese pressing. I got this framed in my house somewhere, the cover. Debbie Gibson, only my dreams. Oh, yeah. By the way, I'm big into Debbie Gibson. Huge fan. Ever since the uh, 80s when I bought a copy of her out of the blue album, this album. Bought a copy of it on cassette to annoy my friends, my punk rock friends, when they were in my car. I kind of bought it as a joke, and then I started really liking it. And then I bought her second album, really liked that too, and now I'm a fan. For life. It says more Tabby Gibson. Oh, yeah. I think that one might be framed cover. Or that, I think that one might have come without a cover. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Shake Your Love, Debbie Gibson. Great cover there. Probably lots more Debbie Gibson in here. Staying together. Oh, yeah. No more rhyme. Look how serious. Look at those multiple watches. Oh, this is a good cover. Look at that hair. Got a couple of those, I guess. Lost in your eyes. Big hits for Debbie. Big hits. Foolish Beat. Oh, here's something. Kellogg's Punk Tarts. Now, oh yeah, this is Live Go-Go's. Live Go-Go's bootleg here. Love the Go-Go's. 
I saw them back on their uh, talk show tour back in the day. This is early punk rock Go-Go's here. All, all, the, all the original members love Go-Go's, man. There's some great stuff. And here's when they got to be the darlings of the pop charts. We got the beat Go-Go's. Always had a huge crush on Jane Weedland. Met her a few times. She's really sweet. She's a big Devo fan. We got the Beat Go-Go's classic cover here. Classic. I remember this from when I was a kid. I had this pinned to my wall. And I uh, love it. Here's some kind of import, I think. Yeah, it's got to be UK or something. Or some other country, yeah. Good stuff. Oh, yeah, this is another, uh, I think, uh, import. This is from Australia, I believe. Great cover. Classic imagery there. What else we got here? Oh, yeah. I had this one pinned to my wall. You can see the tack hole at the top. When I was a kid, I had that pinned to my wall. Our lips are sealed. You know, uh, the guy from the specials, oh, what's his name? He wrote that song with Jane Weedland, and the Fun Boy 3 actually did a cover of uh, Our Lips Are Sealed, or their own version of Our Lips Are Sealed, which is really great. Kind of slowed down, melancholy version. There's Vacation, great stuff. Two of those. Oh, this one's autographed. I forgot I got Jane to autograph that. Man. I have to pull that out and frame it. And here is Beatnik Beach. Some weird Spanish pressing or something. Cool. Oh, look at this. Yeah, the Go-Go's picture disc. Automatic. Good song. Oh, look at this Japanese. Look at that. Turn to you. Mm -mm -mm. Turn to you. Turn to you. Another turn to you. This one looks like maybe U.S. pressing. Great graphics. I think that's the tour I saw them on. Is that... Is that talk show or vacation? I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Head over heels. Great single. Yeah, I got lots of go-go's. Get up and go. Boom, ba boom, boom, boom. Love it. Love it. Another head over heels. Oh, yeah. Has the whole world lost its head? This is one of the later things off. Uh, what's that compilation? I had that little graphic on the cover there. Can't remember the name of the compilation, but great song. Frosted. Frosted is Jane Weedland's uh, kind of pop punk band that came out in the, uh, say, 90s. Yeah, 95 here. Love Frosted. They did a lot of great stuff. What's this? Oh, Kristen Hoffman. Okay. Kristen Hoffman is, um, he was in a band called The Mumps, a uh, L.A. punk band called The Mumps. Kind of like a pop uh, pop, uh, power pop band. And this is his single that he put out, his solo single. And he, uh, oh man, why is it sticking? Why is it sticking? Okay, yeah, there's the cover. Kristen Hoffman. So yeah, he... Signed it. What did he say here? Is this a flounce or a flourish? Too bad you couldn't find your B side or your buy side. Ha! That's right. He wanted me to be bi curious. <laughs> and I just wasn't. Unfortunately, I'm just not wired that way. <sighs> yeah, that's great. Anyway, he also wrote um, a lot of Klaus Nomi's. Uh, songs and he is very close to that whole class know me thing which i totally respect him for i don't remember what this is final communications it seems like it's going to be punk rock hesitation consumption government alpha yeah i don't know what that is but i'm going to say punk rock hey test pressings oh these are test pressings of test pressings of the grand pricks another friend of mine's band this uh, included two members of my band Crabber Keeper um, and uh, Matt and um, Scott. And they had a great punk band called Grand Pricks. 
it was fantastic. And uh, number 20 of 300, don't you know? So yeah, there's that. And last, oh yeah, this is awful. This is another band called Grand Prix, and I just bought it because, uh, well, it was free. I got it because uh, my friend was in a band called Grand Prix, spelled differently, and so anyway, it was free. So that's, that's this box. And that is this box gone. We've looked at it. We're going to put it back, and then we'll be back next time for some more 7-inch perusing. Thanks for watching, y'all.